Hi, my name is Lorena Sady. I am the founder and managing attorney here at Sady Law Group. And I wanted to do a video today about a very, very common question I get from my chapter seven clients, which is how fast can I get a car after I come out of bankruptcy? And this question is very important for a couple of reasons because a lot of times folks, um, they, they know they need to file bankruptcy. They have a horrible car loan. Um, and, and that might be one of the reasons that they're in this, this predicament. And so they, they know that they're not going to keep their current car, that they're going to end up, you know, either during the case or after the case, they're going to let it go back, which for a lot of folks, that is a good idea. So, you know, um, they'll, I don't, I always tell folks, you know, your life better than me. But for most of my folks, when they ask my opinion, I'll say, you know, it, it is good if you have a bad deal on a car, you can let it go. And then when you come out of your bankruptcy, you can get another car. What's great is it, it will report on your credit and it's a good way to rebuild your credit. I mean, it is. Um, so everybody is different. It depends on their situation, but this is a very, very common question. And to highlight it, I wanted to kind of talk about, first of all, I am, an, you know, I'm a bankruptcy attorney. I'm not a car dealer. I don't work for car dealers. Um, I can only tell you what I'm seeing at the moment um, because people will be like, oh yeah, well, I talked to this person, that person, that's fine. Again, I'm not a car creditor. Not, it's not what I do. <laughs> so I'm telling you what I'm seeing at this time. Right now, we're in 2024. Right now, what I see is most of the car dealerships will give you a better rate. The interest rate that we are typically seeing for our folks that are, that are, that are shopping around, that are getting car, um, cars after bankruptcy, they're, they're getting interest rates anywhere from like 16% to 20%. So yes, still high, but that's usually the range that we see. So it does pay to shop around, of course. Um, and then the other thing is, it used to be that most car dealers, they would not finance anybody until they were out of the bankruptcy. They got their discharge. Now, legally, once you file, once you file your case, any debts that you incur after that, you can't put into your bankruptcy. So it's not like there was, I, I guess they just wanted to know 100% you were done with your bankruptcy. That was probably the, the reasoning for that. Um, in terms of the legality, they could, anybody, as long as it's after you filed in a chapter seven case, cause you don't need permission. Another thing, you don't need permission from the bankruptcy court in your chapter seven case to get a car. Nobody cares, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so nobody cares. In chapter 13, you betcha, you better not go buy a car without the bankruptcy court approving it. But this is chapter seven, totally different chapter, uh, totally different set of rules in this regard. So if you file bankruptcy and you find a car dealer that will finance you, you can go ahead and get the, the, car, the car loan. You can, there's nothing that prevents you from doing that. And for some folks, that is a really good option. Um, it's just up to you, but I will, I'm gonna tell you right now, you file bankruptcy and you are gonna start getting bombarded with offers. You're gonna get offers for secure credit cards, you're gonna get offers for vehicles, okay? So my advice is shop around. While you know you're you're usually in your chapter seven bankruptcy about four months from start to finish, some folks will file the bankruptcy and they know they know that they're going to let their car go. Now some folks choose to quit paying their car payment at that point um, because when they file the seven, even in chapter seven, you still have the automatic stay that is protecting that asset. So if the car creditor wants to pick the car up before the end of the chapter seven, they have to file a motion for relief from stay to come, which gets the, where they go to the court and they say, you know, this is chapter seven. We, you know, they either need to pay or we're gonna, you know, we wanna pick up the car. So that's a motion for relief from stay. So they may file that in your case. What I see is a lot of car creditors don't file those um, unless it's some like nasty personal relationship or buy here, buy here, pay here lots are, I mean, so, some of the stuff that those folks do <laughs> are interesting to say the least, but you will see them be very aggressive and they'll file them and they can, I mean, there's, you know, they can do it. I've seen for the most part though, a lot of car creditors do not file those because number one, it costs money to file the motions. Um, and a lot of them will, will wait. And if the person doesn't sign the reaffirmation agreement, which is the agreement where they say they're not bankrupting on an asset, 
Then at the end of the bankruptcy case, once you get discharged, they will come pick up the car. So the majority of creditors do that. That's all I can really say, at least here in the Northern District of Georgia, that's the way it rolls. So I'll see some clients that will, will decide, okay, well, I'm just gonna stop making my car payment and then I'm gonna start checking out all these other offers. So you can certainly do that. And if you have a car creditor that will let you finance and get into another car before you're discharged, cool. I have found most of the car creditors want you to wait. They want you to be out of your Chapter 7 bankruptcy, meaning you have your discharge, okay? Not after your 341 hearing. They want your discharge letter from the court. That takes about four months, at least here in Northern District of Georgia. You're looking at four months from start to finish. Most of the car dealers want to see a copy of that paper. Now, you will be sent a copy of that paper, don't worry, from the court. But that is what they are going to want to see um, so you can prove that you're done with your bankruptcy. So whatever deal you're going to work out with a car creditor, knock yourself out, all on you. Cool. Um, there's nothing that prevents you in a Chapter 7 case from doing that. Just remember, Chapter 7, that's okay. Chapter 13, no, lots of trouble. <laughs> but if you are a Chapter 7 client and you would like to try to get a car, that's going to be the, one of the easiest things for you to get coming out of bankruptcy. It'll blow your mind. It really will. Um, and a lot of times my clients call me because they think these are like scam offers. And they're not scam offers. They're legit. And they're trying to get you into it. And, you know, I guess you have to look at this kind of, this is the logic. You, you're going through a bankruptcy. That means, number one, your debt to income ratio is now amazing because you've wiped all this debt out. So, you, you know, you really probably don't need, the only thing you're gonna have is gonna be this car payment and then like your rent and insurance. So a lot of times folks that have are going through a bankruptcy or about to get out of bankruptcy, they're a much better credit risk than somebody that just has a lot of debt, they haven't gone off the cliff, so to speak. And so, you know, that is, I think, the logic where they, they, are, they will put you in a car. I mean, if you have a W-2 job um, and can show that, you can get a car pretty easy after a bankruptcy. I mean, that's, that's what I've seen. I've been doing this 22 years, and, and that seems to, to always be like the, the, the thing that's so easy to get after a bankruptcy. Um, I know some people, bless their hearts, they're like, I know it's going to be 10 years before I can get a car because it's on your credit, you know, a seven is on your credit for 10 years. And it's like, no, no, you, you can get a car probably in two months after you have your bankruptcy if you really want it. So that part, super easy. Now, of course, be wise. Um, try to get something that's reasonable. Not, a, you know, don't get a high ticket um, item car. Get something that you could pay off in a few years. That'll really help your credit. Especially, you know, you know you're going to get whacked on the in the interest, right? You know that you're not going to get, you know, 2% or 5% interest. You know you're going to get, you know, hit with a bigger interest rate. So knowing that, don't just sign up for a fancy new car coming out of bankruptcy. You'll be back in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy if you do that. Don't do that. Get something that is reasonable, that's affordable, and that'll help you build up your credit and say maybe it only takes you like, maybe you get a loan and you pay it off in two years or three years. Well, then when you want to get the car that you really want, you can get a good interest rate because your credit's going to be really good at that point. So that's it. I just want to do a quick video because I get a lot of calls about it. And I know there's a lot of confusion with clients um, about what they can and can't do and what needs to be shown and whatnot. And heck, even some car dealers, they don't understand the difference between Chapter 7 and Chapter 13. And they'll tell a poor 7 client, well, we need we need the court to approve it. No, they don't. And, and that's fine. I mean, I, I get it. It's, you know, it, it is what it is. And I'm always, you know, in my firm, I'm always happy to send an email. I'll usually say, Give me the salesperson's email and I'll be happy to email them and tell them this is a chapter seven, this is not a 13 and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions about bankruptcy, please don't hesitate to reach out, at least if you're here in the Northern District of Georgia where I practice.